Mac OS 13 is already shaping up to be the unlucky Mac OS for older Mac owners. If you've already seen the Ventura requirements, then you should already know what I'm talking about. So let's get into that. Just a heads up, there's going to be pretty low-key visuals in this, so you can just kind of just listen along. The following Macs are currently supported in macOS Ventura 13 as of the Developer Preview 1. Just a reminder, all the URLs featured in this video are in the video's description. So let's also bring up the list of T2 security chips that equip Macs. And you'll notice the connection is pretty strong here. Interestingly, I haven't seen many publications make the same leap, but Ars Technica did, and they had the same observation. So the question becomes immediately, can you install macOS 13 on a non-T2 Mac? macOS 13 is currently in public beta phase or developer preview, and at this point, even the point releases are going to have radical changes. I doubt it's going to cut out support necessarily or change the support list. It's just that moving forward, different problems could arise getting the operating system to load on non-supported Macs. Problems with unsupported hardware can occur even after the OS has been released to the public. If anyone remembers the Sur Plus glitch on Big Sur that interrupted the boot sequence, that occurred in, if I remember off the top of my head, 11.3. So these OSs can radically change over time. What I say in this video might not be current later. Let's talk about those classic Mac Pros and the trash can Mac Pros, as I have a feeling that's why almost everyone watching this video is here. Esteemed community member Silex, I think I'm saying his name right, posted a bullet point list of community discoveries on Mac rumors. First off, you cannot natively install the OS from a classic Mac Pro or a Mac Pro 2013. This is because the CPU requirements now require the Haswell chipset, otherwise the installer will fail. Haswell CPUs are found on 2013 to 2015 Macs, and the Mac Pro 2013 is not one of those because it is a Ivy Bridge chipset, which are largely found in the 2012 Mac lineup. We will circle back to the CPU thing in just a minute. Next, you'll need to grab the DYLD cache from an M1. Why? It doesn't support AVX or AVX2 CPU instructions in Rosetta 2. The DYLD cache is a dynamic linker cache of all the system provided libraries. It's distributed with the OS when you install it. There's not an insignificant chance that every OS update will require updating the DYLD cache. As Silex points out, applications that require AVX or AVX2 apps may never work on unsupported CPUs. So to come back to the CPU requirement, infamously, the classic Mac Pros do not support AVX. The 2013 Mac Pro supports AVX, but not the AVX2 instruction set. Not that this is important to understand, but AVX, or Advanced Vector Extensions, are a set of instructions for doing single instruction, multi-data, or SIMD operations on x86 CPUs. It's just designed to speed up certain types of floating point compute operations. Unfortunately, these old CPUs just don't support these later gen features. Apple also dropped older GPU supports on the AMD and Intel fronts. Now required are AMD Polaris chipset based GPUs, aka the Radeon 500 series and above, and the Intel Kaby Lake chipsets, or the HD 600 series and above. My gut feeling here is that this is the last time Apple's going to drop AMD chipset support until they drop all of it. The reason I think this is because the 2019 Mac Pro shipped with the 5800 Pro variant of the player's chipset. While editing this video, I realized I never mentioned Metal 3, which I'm sure is going to have a profound effect on GPU support on old Macs like the 2013 Mac Pro. Also worth mentioning is Apple has also dropped older airport support yet again, now down to about two late-gen Broadcom chipsets, and also dropped USB 1.1 support. Oh, and I almost forgot Ethernet support's been dropped too. Right now, the install process is pretty brutal, so the prognosis isn't great. 
However, people have it up and running on classic Mac Pros. The 2013 Mac Pros have a bit of a disadvantage here because they do not have traditionally upgradable GPUs, and their GPU support was dropped. For the rest of the Mac lineup, it's up to GPU drivers and AVX2 support. If you're unsure if your Mac supports AVX2, you can run the following command. I feel like in hindsight, I should have been able to predict that the next place Apple would have dropped a lot of hardware support would have been around the T2 chipset. The upside here is I honestly feel like the next OS release 2 or maybe even 3 will continue to support these Macs. It's mid-2022 and Apple is still selling Intel Macs. Hopefully this means something, but the cynics out there would call me out if I didn't mention that Apple was selling the Mac Pro 2013s in 2018. This development has been pretty brutal and doesn't bode well for Apple's long-term commitment to support computers in general. Apple narrowing to a five-year support window is quite frankly user-hostile, anti-consumer, and reeks of hypocrisy in the highest order for a company that pretends to be concerned with the environment. Supporting systems for longer is certainly bound to have a much more profound effect on e-waste than not shipping phone chargers with its phones. Of course, the irony here though is if Apple supports old hardware, it doesn't make new sales. I almost now prefer the old method of paying for OS updates if that ensures future support in the long term. I don't want this video to turn into a rant about planned obsolescence, but I feel it's something that we need to keep in mind moving forward as supporting right to repair legislation shouldn't just be limited to repairing your device, it should also include a support window. Hopefully this was an off year for Mac OS, ideally a computer should get at least 7 years of support, preferably more, especially with computers being as powerful as they are today. As far as Mac OS 13 support and the classic Mac Pro and the Mac Pro 2013, I will continue to cover it when there's much more concrete information. My gut feeling is that moving forward, Ventura, if we get the final release up and running under classic Mac Pros and Mac Pro 2013s, are going to be heavily reliant on OpenCore and OpenCore Legacy Patcher, and then certain services may never work under these computers, perhaps PassKey, which is Apple's password replacement strategy. That one really seems to be based on the T2 and the biometrics, and yeah, you get it. Hopefully you found this video informative and as always, hey, thanks for watching.